The small town of Monchal, hidden away in a narrow valley, benefited greatly from the wars that plagued Germany in the 17th century. Today, it benefits greatly from the tourist industry. The town's history can be traced back to the 12th century when the Dukes of Limburg built a castle. It's first mentioned in 1198 as Mons Josi, a name that went through several revisions before finally being Germanized in 1918 due to anti-French sentiment after the First World War. In 1435, the castle fell to the Margrave of Jülich. About a century later, imperial troops almost destroyed the castle and the town at the end of the Gelders Wars, a complicated series of conflicts that started with an unpaid debt and ended with the Holy Roman Empire taking control of the Low Countries. But the town's history may go back even further than the castle. On the opposite hill is a fortification known as the Halle. It doesn't seem to have been a simple watchtower, rather it's now thought to have been an actual castle. The theory is that there was no room to extend it, so the Dukes of Limburg built a new castle instead. It was, however, the textile industry that made Monschau, but it's surprisingly difficult to find out how this came about. Sources seem to agree that one of the first textile manufacturers here was Arnold Schmitz. The usual story is that he was a Protestant who fled Aachen during the religious conflicts that resulted from the Reformation. But this now seems doubtful. Apparently, the Schmitz family was in fact local. What is certain is that Monschau's remote location meant it escaped the worst of all those armed conflicts in the 17th century, allowing its textile industry to quietly grow. The breakthrough came with Johann Heinrich Scheibler. His family came from near Cologne, but he had been an apprentice at the textile factory in nearby Imgenbruch, then married the daughter of his master, who just happened to be the widow of a textile manufacturer from Monschau. He set about modernizing the factory and exporting high-quality fabrics all over Europe and even to Egypt and Persia. In Monschau, he built the Red House. The door with the helmet led to his private apartment, the door with the pelican to his company headquarters. Today it is, of course, a museum. Scheibler's brother-in-law, Bartholomeus Troistorf, had also founded a factory here and his son built this villa for himself. It's now owned by the town and used for exhibitions, receptions and civil wedding ceremonies. The second half of the 18th century was the high point of Monschau's textile industry. Unfortunately, the remoteness of the town which had facilitated its growth now hampered it, as the Industrial Revolution almost passed it by. A railway was eventually built in the 1880s, but even that didn't help. It closed about a hundred years later and is now a cycle path, but one with an unusual status. Over to the left of me is Germany. Over to the right is Germany. But I am in Belgium. In 1920, as a result of the Versailles Treaty, the districts of Eupen and Malmedy were ceded to Belgium. But this left the railway crossing the border several times, and so the following year the line and the stations were also handed over to Belgium. And to this day the path remains on Belgian soil. Now, you may wonder, what's the big deal? I mean, after all, both Germany and Belgium are Schengen area states, so it's not as if you need a passport or anything just to cycle or walk along here. But it is a big deal if you have an accident. Call the emergency number and you'll almost certainly get through to a German dispatcher who will have to pass on your message to a German-speaking dispatcher in Belgium. To help them, signs at regular intervals carry information to pinpoint the exact location. German paramedics will probably be first on the scene, but the German police won't be allowed to do anything. That's complicated enough as it is, but things get even more complicated if somebody decides to sue. 
If all the participants are German citizens, then German civil law applies. In all other cases, the only advice anyone can give you is find a lawyer who specialises in international law. Fortunately for Monschau, it narrowly escaped destruction as US troops advanced into Germany in 1944. They were able to take the town without much of a fight, and so it was preserved to become a popular tourist destination. You may have noticed in this video that I was extremely unlucky with the weather. In fact, one of the most irritating aspects of my visit was all the locals telling me I should have been there the previous day. Fair warning though, even on a rainy day at the tail end of the season, the place was full of tourists. As I hinted, Monschau has no train station, but it does have a regular bus service from Aachen. The SB66 runs as a limited stop service Mondays to Fridays until the early evening. At other times of the day and on Saturdays and Sundays and public holidays, the less frequent 66 takes over. Both these buses take about an hour to reach Monschau. They don't call at Aachen Central Station, but they do call at Rote Erde Station for local trains to and from Cologne. By car, Monschau can be reached from the A44 Autobahn leaving at the Aachen-Lichtenbusch exit and following the signs for Monschau. But there is one thing that you need to bear in mind about this route and that is that between the towns of Röntgen and Konsen it actually passes through Belgian territory. Although it is a German road and it is not even connected to the Belgian road network, it is still subject to Belgian law. You'll notice this because it has a 90 km an hour speed limit instead of the usual 100 for a German road. And there are also different regulations regarding things like, for example, blood alcohol limits. As far as I know, the Belgian police don't actually patrol the road looking for Germans breaking Belgian traffic regulations. But if you have an accident, then there may be a problem. There is an international treaty allowing German paramedics to respond, but if there's any violation of traffic regulations to be investigated, that will be handled by the Belgian police and the Belgian courts, and they will do so according to Belgian law. In addition, there are a couple of points where this road crosses the cycle path that I mentioned in the video, which is also on Belgian territory, and there you will find face the same kind of issues, so it's even more important than normal to watch for cyclists. Wheelchair users will find Monschau challenging, if not completely inaccessible. Even if you're not in a wheelchair, some of the footpaths up to the Halle can get rather slippery underfoot, so be especially careful in wet weather. And finally, I am very happy to report that at least somebody was pleased to see me. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.